this is the third section uh, on the chapter um, on statics and um, now we introduce friction we've looked at friction before and you'll remember that the maximum that friction can be is mu r where mu is this thing called the coefficient of friction and its value is between uh, 0 and 1. Um, for something to move, then the pushing force needs to uh, exceed this F max. So unless the pushing force, so let's say we had something on a flat surface like this, Okay, and it's mg is its mass. We've got a normal reaction there, and we've got mg going down, and there's some sort of force pulling this way. It's only going to start to move if that pulling force is greater than e um, than mu r. So if that pulling force, so if the pulling force is greater than mu r the thing will start accelerating in that direction if the pulling force is less than or equal to mu r okay it won't move and normally we would say that if the pulling force equals mu r it's in equilibrium or maybe on the point of moving We'll start with a diagram. So here's my rough surface here with my 8 kg mass, which has its own weight here of 8 g. There will be a normal reaction of R and there'll also be this horizontal force well in part a it's a horizontal force of p and there's a resistive force here which is mu r which is going to be 0.5 r mu r it tells us that the coefficient of friction is 0.5 okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're also going to put on what part b is as well so this is going to be in green and that's at an angle of 60 degrees so let me just put on what those components are for that part of the question um actually let me do them here so um this part here is going to be p cos 60 this is for part b and this will be p sine 60. right so starting with part a uh, we're going to resolve horizontally and vertically so vertically we have r equals 8g and horizontally we're going to have 0.5 r equals p now we can just substitute the r which is 8g so 0.5 times 8g is p so p exact value is 4g or if you want to give your answer as a decimal 4 times 9.8, 4 times 9.8 is going to be 39.2 newtons. Okay, part B, this is where we're going to use the green force. So I'll tell you what, let's just rub out this one. So, and we've got the horizontal and vertical components. What that does mean is that our forces in the horizontal and vertical are going to change so if we do the 
um, vertical forces we've now got a p sine 60 that wasn't there before so we've got r plus p sine 60 equals hg and in our horizontal direction we've now got 0.5 r equals P cos 60 so slightly different than what we had before we need to find um, P so we need to make R the subject of one and put it in the other so let's take this one here and make R the subject of that if we do that we'll have R equals P cos 60 over 0.5 or we could say times by 2 we're going to put that into this equation here so we'll have p cos 60 divided by 0.5 plus p sine 60 equals hg so we need to go about making p the subject so if we factorise it, we'll have P um, cos 60 over 0 0.5 plus sine 60 equals HG. So we can make P the subject and work out what P is. So P will equal HG divided by all that other stuff. Sine uh, cos 60 over 0 0.5 plus sine 60 so let's work that out and see what we get that's 42.01443337 so three significant figures is going to be 42.0 newton so having that force at an angle changes p it changes the maximum that it can be before it was 39.2 newtons and it's actually increased it because of the way that the force is at an angle we've got these horizontal and vertical components Right, let's start by drawing a diagram of what's going on. So we have an incline of 20 degrees above the horizontal, so we'll put that in. We have a mass of 10 kilograms, which is laying on there, so we can put here 10g. And what else are we given? Um, it's in limiting equilibrium. Now, in the first part of the question, um, in part A, there are no other forces on the box and it's not sliding down. Well, its own weight wants to make it slide down. So that's this component here, which we'll work out in a second. What's stopping it from sliding down? Friction, which is going to oppose the uh, motion. So it's going to be. Um, pointing up the slope so that's going to be mu r there and we have a normal reaction r here um, this angle is going to be 20 degrees the same as the incline so then we can put in here that we have 10 g cos 20 and here 10 g sine 20 so these are the only forces that are uh, on that particle and what we need to do is to find the coefficient of friction between the box and the plane so we need to find mu so let's look at the forces that are running parallel to the plane and we have mu r up and 10 g sine 20 down so mu and r are both unknown so we also need to look at the forces p 
perpendicular to the plane and those are going to be um, r up equal to the 10g cos 20 down. So if we're going to find mu, we're going to substitute this value of r. We'll just substitute that there. So I suppose the first thing you could do is say that mu equals 10g sine 20 over r. And we know what r is. So mu is 10g sine 20 over 10g cos 20. So the advantage of leaving everything in terms of g is that that and that cancels out. And in fact, the question just becomes basically mu is equal to tan 20. So we'll put that down. Tan 20 degrees is 0.364 to three significant figures. 364 3SF. Right, let's have a look at part B of this question. Now part B it says that a, a horizontal of force P is applied to the box. So let's put that on. Let's take this out of the way. So let's do some different colour. So a horizontal force there, that's horizontal, and that force is P. Uh, given that the box remains in equilibrium, find a maximum possible value of P. Well, now that that force is trying to push the box up, it's going to remain in equilibrium. Um, but mu R is now going to be pointing in that direction because it's trying to oppose the motion. So just by changing or adding a force, you've now changed the direction of, of friction. It's still not moving, but this force is trying to push it up. And friction will oppose that. So this angle here is 20 degrees because we have an alternate um, angle here. Let's see if I can get the... Laser pen doesn't seem to be working, never mind. Uh, so let's put on what those uh, what the components of this force is. So this is going to be P cos 20 here, and this one's going to be P sine 20. So now we have different forces on there that's going to change our equations. So let's have a look at what's going on parallel to the slope. So parallel to the slope, we are going to have the P cos 20 going up. P cos 20 and the forces which are going down the slope are going to be uh, mu R and 10G sine 20. Let's now look at the forces which are perpendicular to the slope and we have R up and we have P sine 20 and 10 G cos 20 going down the slope or going down perpendicular to the slope. So now what we can do is to take this equation here and substitute it for where we have R here. So that's going to give us P cos 20 equals mu times r and r is this p sine 20 plus 10g cos 20 so that's mu r plus 10g sine 20 we need to make uh, p the subject so probably the first thing i'm going to do is to expand these brackets here so that I can get the P term out and then I will put all the P terms on one side. So if I expand the brackets, I get P cos 20 equals mu P sine 20 plus 10 mu G 
cos 20 plus 10g sine 20. We will put the p term on the other side. That's the mu p sine 20. So minus mu p sine 20. I'm keeping it as mu for now. And then later on, I'll, I'll change it to that 0 .3 point, uh, 0 0.364 or use the answer button on my calculator because that's the last calculation I did. I want to get it as exact as possible. So I've moved that term across and then I'm left with 10 mu g cos 20 plus 10 g sine 20. If I factorize the p and keep the p on its own there that means I'll be dividing by um, cos 20 minus mu sine 20 yeah so basically what I've done is I've factorized I know what's going to be in the brackets and I know what I'm going to be dividing both sides by and then I've got 10 mu g cos 20 plus 10 g sine 20 so let's plug all of this in our calculator and see what we get for an answer so that gives me 82 so three significant figures 82.2 newtons so now exercise 7c on pages 139 to 142